One of the periodic trends is called ionization energy. Ionization energy is defined as the energy needed to remove an electron from an atom in the gas phase. The first ionization energy, called I1, is the energy required to remove an electron from a neutral atom in its ground state. So we need to define that the electron's in its ground state because if it was in a higher n value, that would make it easier for the electron to be removed. So we need to have it unified. So we say all the electrons are in their ground state where n is equal to one. Here we see an example of an ionization where magnesium neutral has an electron removed from it to make magnesium plus, and notice it's in its gas state. I1 is listed as the amount of energy caused for this to happen. We can repeat this process and get a second ionization energy, I2, and this is defined as the energy required to remove an electron from a gaseous ion, which has a plus one charge. Here we can take magnesium plus and remove another electron from it to make magnesium two plus. And this will have I2, or the second ionization energy. And it's possible to keep removing electrons to produce a third, fourth, or fifth ionization energy. However, each succeeding ionization energy However, each succeeding ionization requires more energy, and we can see that here where I2 is almost double I1. The reason for this is that for I2, we are removing an electron from something that's positively charged. So here the magnesium is plus charged. We're trying to remove a negatively charged electron from that, and that is more difficult to do than when removing an electron from a neutral species. So each successive ionization energy is more difficult and requires more energy. The general trend for ionization energy says that they increase as we go up and to the right. This follows the trend for Z effective, which makes sense because as Z effective increases, there's a stronger interaction between the nucleus and the electrons. Therefore, they'd be harder or require more energy to remove. Z effective increases as we go up and to the right. Therefore, the ionization also increases as we go up and to the right. There are a couple of important exceptions to this periodic trend. The first one has to do with group 13 elements, which are right here, and that they actually have a lower ionization energy than group two elements. And we're talking about the first ionization energy. We would expect based off of the trend that group 13 would have a higher ionization energy, and that's not true. We can see the reason for this discrepancy when we look at, at the electronic configurations of these groups. And a good example of this is the difference between aluminum and magnesium. The electron configuration for aluminum is neon 3s2 3p1, and the electron configuration of magnesium is neon 3s2. When aluminum loses an electron, it comes from the 3p subshell. However, when magnesium loses an electron, it comes from a 3s subshell. Between these two, the 3p subshell is actually higher in energy, which it makes it easier to remove. So we can say that the ionization energy for aluminum is lower than the ionization energy for magnesium. Another important exception to the periodic trend for ionization energy involves group 16 elements, which are right here, and group 15 elements. And group 16 elements actually have a slightly lower ionization energy than group 15 elements, which goes against the periodic trend. A good example of this is that sulfur has a lower ionization energy than phosphorus. The answer for this, once again, comes from the electron configurations. Here, sulfur in its neutral state has an electron configuration of neon, 3s2, 3p4, and when it loses an electron to become positively charged, it has an electron configuration that contains 3p3. A half-filled p subshell contains three electrons, and remember, a half-filled subshell is stabilizing. So in going from neutral to positively charged, sulfur gains a half-filled 3p subshell. Phosphorus, on the other hand, starts out with a half-filled subshell in its neutral state. So when it loses an electron to become phosphorus plus, the electron configuration becomes 3p2. In losing an electron, phosphorus actually gives up a half-filled subshell. So this means that this is not energetically favorable. Thus, it's easier to remove an electron from sulfur than phosphorus, and therefore the ionization energy for sulfur is lower than the ionization energy is for phosphorus.